Convection and dispersion are important processes in engineered and natural systems. Here we see an example from a volcano in Iceland that is erupting, an ash plume is being ejected up into the atmosphere, and then the airflow is more or less horizontal, and the ash plume is carried downstream by the flowing air. And as it does so, the ash spreads out and becomes more dilute. So the process of uh, flowing with the, or uh, moving with the flow uh, is advection. And the process of spreading out uh, and becoming more dilute is uh, dispersion. Here's some more examples of advection and dispersion. Up here in the upper left corner, we see a jet of fluid being injected into, a, uh, uh, into an experimental cell. And this is a special fluid that can be identified uh, using this optical technique. And so you can see the, the jet is about this wide right here, and it spreads out. And by the time it gets downstream, it's many times wider than it starts. So that, uh, that's a characteristic spreading that is caused by uh, dispersion. And if we, this is 15 centimeters across. So this is a pretty small experiment, but if we go up in scale, here's the Grand River, and uh, it's flowing here through this uh, dike structure that contains it. But as soon as it gets to the end of the dike structure, you can see that it flares out uh, and forms this plume of uh, sediment-laden water in the, the much cleaner uh, Lake Michigan. So the plume is spreading out, and actually in this case, there's a flow that goes parallel to the, the coast and uh, moves the plume uh, downstream, much like we saw the plume being carried uh, down uh, by the um, flow in the atmosphere, by the, the prevailing winds um, in the volcanic eruption. So these are examples of uh, jets that are uh, uh, where this compound is injected into a flow. Uh, and forms a plume. And this is another case, this hydrothermal vent. Uh, this is a fluid that's uh, very hot that's injected into the, uh, at the ocean bottom. The hot fluid cools quickly and crystallizes out uh, small uh, particles of minerals that form this black uh, smoke-like uh, material. So this is, this is much like the ash and volcanoes uh, in that it's a flow that consist of small particles. And you can see this characteristic spreading of the plume. And you can also see these, uh, these, these various structures within the plume that are uh, turbulent vortices uh, over a wide range of scales that are tending to mix the, uh, the plume. And this mixing process is really at the heart of dispersion. Now, this case here, is a little bit different. In this case, there's a stream, and these people up here put a dye tracer in the stream, and you can see that it uh, creates quite a, a striking color. It flows down uh, with the water, and then it spreads out here. Um, and so this is a bit different than these other cases because this is a tracer that's just put into the flow, and it moves with the flow. Um, in these cases, we have the, the tracer or the compound that we're, we're interested in is actually being injected with, a, with its own flow. So it's, it's creating a flow structure uh, as it's being injected. But in this case, it's really much more of a passive system where the tracer is just moving with the flow and spreading out in this uh, advection and dispersion uh, process. Now, this example over here, this is from the groundwater, and this actually uh, is a map of the, what, what the groundwater concentrations are inferred to be as a result of many uh, borings that were drilled here. Uh, this is the Ohio River up here, and this is an industrial facility near Paducah, Kentucky. And there was a spill of some contaminants, and it got into the groundwater, and the groundwater just is uh, flowing naturally here, and the contaminants entered into that flow and formed this plume. And so here's one plume you can see going like that. And 
it's moving uh, along and you can see that it is spreading laterally uh, somewhat uh, and this is another plume and uh, another plume here so we've got uh, jets forming plumes and we've got uh, plumes from um, compounds that are just introduced into a flow in both cases they form these plumes that move downstream and uh, as the compound is carried by advection and it spreads laterally and reduces in concentration as the compound is dispersed. Now another important thing that happens uh, with dispersion is that the mixing process that you see here that causes this plume to spread out uh, can also bring two reactive molecules in contact or perhaps multiple molecules in contact and, and uh, facilitate chemical reactions. So dispersion is going to be an important process in controlling concentrations in plumes by essentially a dilution process, but also it will be important in facilitating uh, chemical reactions. So we can harness this dispersive process uh, with uh, static mixers and use this uh, for our uh, to our advantage. This is a simple example of an inline mixer. This is a, a piece that is put in a pipe to create a, a mixing process and you can see this is like a twisted uh, plate, uh, twisted uh, 180 degrees and then here's another twisted piece that's welded onto it and another piece and so on and and so what happens is that um, what are that's or particles that are moving along here imagine there are two um, molecules that are close together and uh, one of them goes on this side of the blade the other goes on this side of the blade so the blade causes the flow to split and then because of this twisting pattern they take uh, much different flow paths and these, these molecules that were once close together now are split apart uh, and um, they, they no longer, they, they don't come back together once the, they get through the end of this mixer. And so that separates the, the particles, uh, puts them perhaps in contact with other particles, uh, tends to make the concentration more uniform. And uh, it is, it's basically, basically implementing this uh, process of dispersion uh, with these uh, different shaped, uh, these specially shaped um, devices. So one of the things that we get out of this is that the dispersion process uh, has as an important component the process of splitting uh, the flow paths uh, that in order to separate the, the particles that are together um, and, uh, and, and mix them up. Now here's another example. This is the Clemson wastewater treatment plant and this is the plant right here uh, right next to Lake Hartwell and if we zoom in on this structure right here oop, uh, there it is and this is the chlorine mixing tank uh, as part of the, the waste treatment and what happens is these other structures here clean the, the um, wastewater and then at the, as one of the last steps they put in some chlorine to uh, kill the bacteria and the chlorine needs to be mixed in with the water and so this structure here is a large mixer and this is a close-up of it the, uh, the the water with the chlorine is introduced and then it flows along this path and as it does so there are um, vortices induced in the flow that uh, mix it up causing the flow to separate and recombine uh, and this uh, in this dispersion process. So this is a, a fairly large structure that's designed to harness the power of dispersion to cause uh, mixing, in this case of chlorine. Okay, so we have this process, uh, really these linked processes of advection and dispersion. Let's first look at a special case of dispersion, uh, diffusion, and we've seen this process before. Uh, this is a process where uh, compounds will spread out in response to a concentration uh, gradient. So let's see, actually we first, if we're going to go through the slide, let's first take a look at advection. We're going to give it a definition here, transport of a substance due to the bulk motion of uh, the fluid. It's also known as uh, convection. 
particularly when uh, heat is being transported, uh, when mass is being transported, it's usually called advection. And so an advective mass flux is the velocity or the, the volumetric flux times the concentration. So that's a, that's a fairly easy concept, I think. We have a flow here, and we've got some mass in the flow uh, that moves along uh, with the flow. And so if we had a, a straight set of flow paths like this, and this is our uh, mass. We could say this is a, a circular region of different concentration. If the only thing that was going on was advection, we might expect that the concentration would just simply translate along uh, the, with the flow. Um, and indeed, that's what advection uh, will, will tell us what happened. But instead, we have this additional process that is uh, is diffusion, and so if we if we just now forget about the flow, and if we just were to introduce this circular region of say higher concentration, then what we've seen is that what would happen is that if we put a a, a, a cross section through here, the concentration would initially look like this blue line, and then with time it would go green, red, uh, light blue. The concentration of this uh, th this region would decrease, and it would spread out. So the concentration out here would would increase, and so this is just the diffusive process, and this would happen in the static fluid. So what happens then, when we have advection and diffusion, is that this process, uh, the diffusive spreading that happens, uh, is just superimposed on the flow. And, and, and I have a little schematic here. So this is our little region of high concentration. And if we have it flowing, um, OK, so yeah, here's the graphic for the diffusion spreading out. So now let's take a look at what happens when we have both of these processes going on. So I kind of did it in this uh, stepwise manner where we've got advection uh, and then diffusion causing it to spread. Okay, so it's a stepwise thing, but what we would have in a you know, plume is uh, the continuous advection and, and diffusion happening uh, simultaneously. Okay, so this is this is probably a, an important combination, advection and diffusion, uh, for, uh, for small structures. But recall that, that diffusion is fairly slow, and so it's going to cause spreading that, that, that is, that's relatively slow. And if it's a very small region, then that may be, um, may, may be important. But um, there's more going on. Uh, in this story, and uh, that's going to be um, uh, this process of, of, of really a mechanical process of, of dispersion. And so um, there are going to be two types of dispersion, and uh, mechanical dispersion in particular. Um, one of them will cause mixing uh, in the direction of flow, and one of them will cause mixing perpendicular to the flow. This transverse dispersion is what causes the plumes to spread out uh, perpendicular to the flow direction. Now, there are there are two main causes for dispersion. One is the, a gradient in flow velocity. Uh, it, we know that in say when you have flow in a pipe, that the flow right along the wall is slower than the flow uh, in the center. So if we start off with a uniform slug of some kind some concentration. The, it's going to tend to get spread out in the direction of flow because the uh, flow in the center of the pore or the center of the, the conduit is going faster. Um, this also may happen as a result of turbulent eddies. So that's one process. Another process is the splitting of flow paths. We saw that with a static mixer, but that can also happen when there are turbulent eddies and the flow paths uh, split and uh, either go around the turbulent eddies or, or are, are consumed or are uh, participating in these uh, circulation patterns within the turbulent eddies. Uh, the flow paths might also split 
just due to um, mechanical obstacles in the flow, like the static mixer, uh, or like various um, uh, obstructions or various solid pieces in uh, the in porous media. So here's an example of how dispersion works due to a, a gradient in the flow velocity. If we have two molecules that are uh, here uh, and then we've got this flow distribution within the pore, then what happens is, uh, this was what I was saying earlier, this one is moving faster than this one uh, and so they tend to get spread out in a longitudinal way. Now one thing that's kind of an interesting effect is that as that happens, as this particle uh, moves out ahead and you might imagine then this this particle would be here and at some point downstream that this particle would be here so they would be split up like that um, but one thing that can then happen is diffusion can play a role in this because when this is happening uh, this concentration right here is now higher than the concentration right here along the wall um, and so that causes diffusion in that direction. And we also have diffusion inward in this direction. So when we have this gradient in flow velocity, it, it can cause a longitudinal dispersion, but dif diffusion that is perpendicular to the flow tends to, to limit that. Okay, that's, that's happening though in laminar flow. In turbulent flow, then we have a, a somewhat different situation. So um, here is the case for uh, dispersion due to splitting of flow paths. And this is this uh, mechanical process where two molecules are here. They go uh, along these paths around, say, a solid grain. And then downstream, they're split apart. So the concentration is lower. And we've spread it out from a, a, a width that's this much to a width that's that much. And we can also envision a set of flow paths that would call longitudinal dispersion, like I show here. Now, this is uh, what I had in mind is that this would be uh, explaining what's happening in a porous media. In a turbulent flow, in an open fluid that's turbulent, uh, we don't have these solid pieces, but we do have these uh, vortices. And so we can have transverse dispersion that's caused by these vortices here. I'm just showing the flow lines going around the vortices, but the flow may also be participating in the, the vortices. Um, and we could also get longitudinal dispersion as a result of this. So we have this spreading both transversely and longitudinally. And the rate at which this happens is going to be related to the rate of the flow or, or maybe the rate of the circulation in these vortices. Um, and the, the extent to which it happens also will depend on uh, the, the scale, the size of these structures. Um, if, this is, uh, if this is a millimeter, then this is going to be separated by a millimeter. But if this is a much larger boulder, uh, say um, half a meter, um, or some kind of low permeability structure that's that size, then it's going to be spread uh, even further. And similarly, we, we've seen that turbulent vortices can occur over a wide range of scales, so this could occur uh, also over, over a wide range of scales. So here's a, um, here's a, a, a picture, and I'll show you a video of mechanical dispersion in a, in a micro model, uh, this is the scale. Is this is a, this is about a millimeter, and so these are solid grains, and these are pores in a porous media. And this example is actually a, an example from um, from the Comsol model library. And the way it's set up is that there's a constant head here and a constant head here over these two ends of the, the rectangle. Uh, this is higher head and is driving the flow. Uh, from high to low head, and these are the these are the paths. These are the streamlines through the model, and you can see here. This is a good example where these streamlines come and split around uh, this solid structure, uh, and then actually here here the streamlines are coming together, uh, and here they're splitting again. Okay, so that's the uh, mechanical dispersion process where it's splitting.
uh, around the grains and spreading out. And you can see here in this uh, simulation that it, it really ends up creating a rather complicated uh, concentration distribution where the concentration here starts out uniform and uh, and we let it flow and you can see that it's certainly spreading transversally and it's spreading longitudinally uh, and we also have this big dilution here right at the front as a result of, uh, of this process. Here's some dead-end pores uh, where the concentration is, is flowing by and there would be, in this case, diffusive exchange between the, the pore and the dead end, uh, b between the pore where the flow is occurring and this dead end pore. Here's another place where that's occurring. And we get this relatively high concentration pass and then all this low concentra lower concentration region. So really a fairly complicated um, uh, scenario at those scales. And so what the mechanical dispersion concept will allow us to do is to take that process and uh, scale it up so that we get roughly the same kind of result um, when we just treat it as a continuum and we're not looking at the, the poor scale. Okay, so that's going to be the objective, that we want to be able to treat this mixing process and include it in the analysis without having to go and do all the this complicated analysis of flow around these these, uh, these solid um, solid structures that have this complicated geometry. Okay, so we have the advective flux. That's just the concentration times the velocity. And what I'd like to do is introduce the concept of a dispersive flux. This is a mass flux, and in a porous media, it's just going to be the mass flux from dispersion is going to be proportional to the gradient and concentration, and it's going to be um, this proportionality here is the, um, the dispersivity um, or the dispersion constant. And for turbulent flow, we have something similar. Uh, if it's just largely in, in one dimension, so it's just flowing in, in, in 1D, then we have uh, turbulent uh, dispersion here, and, um, and it also has the same form. Uh, it, it, what I've, I'm just showing is a derivative in one direction here, this is a, a, a gradient. Um, but these are, these, these are essentially equivalent. So we have the same kind of form now, this dispersion constant would be different for these two cases, and we'll see some of the details. But in general, what we have is this uh, dispersion constant is uh, going to be equal to the flow rate times some kind of length times a constant. Okay, so I think that's consistent with what we saw previously in our conceptual model that the, the rate at which dispersion is happening depends on how fast the flow is occurring. And it also depends on a length scale, like the, in, our, in our previous sketch, uh, it might be, that length scale might have something to do with this size or, or this size. Okay, so we, um, we end up with this diffusivity um, or a, a dispersion constant, but it's going to, it looks like this. This is the same kind of same form of equation as Fick's law, um, where we have mass flux driven by a concentration gradient, and so this is behaving like a diffusivity. And indeed, if we look at the, this general form, this is just a constant. That's a flux or a, a fluid velocity, and that's a length. So this has units of length squared per time which uh, is the same units as the diffusivity or the diffusion constant. Okay, so this is how we're going to handle dispersive flux. We're going to have a, a, a term that looks like uh, fixed law for diffusion, but the diffusion constant, instead of, uh, instead of depending on the fluid viscosity and the size of the molecule like the diffusion constant does, this diffusion constant will depend on 
the flow velocity and this length scale. Okay, now this this diffusive or dispersive flux, that's what's going to form plumes that spread. So here's a plume formed by this little teeny source right there. This is that little speck. We've got a uniform flow in this direction, and the plume is is spreading out. So it's it's uh, maybe ten times wider here than it is here, and that flux in this transverse direction is driven by uh, this kind of a process.